Good morning, everyone. I've been reading in uh, Luke's Gospel from my devotions, and I came across a verse a couple of days ago that I underlined, and I didn't quite know why. Uh, It's from Luke chapter 21, verse uh, 34 through 36. Uh, Jesus is saying, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that, and, that, uh, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. And here's where I underlined. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. And I double underlined, and to stand before the Son of Man. At the time, I didn't know why I underlined it. I just felt like I should. And I looked at it the next day particularly at the double underlined part, and to stand before the Son of Man. Uh, so why are we standing? I thought we're supposed to bow down and worship the Lord. Well, yes, of course, we do that too. Uh, and I'll do some research on it just a little bit. And thinking about the times this was written, who would stand before a king? Someone who was worthy to stand before the king. A prisoner would be thrown down on his face before the king. Uh, A slave, of course, would fall down on their face before the king. And a guilty criminal is thrown to the ground before the accusers and before the execution and before the king. But this says we're to stand before the Son of Man, i.e. our king, our Lord Jesus. So how do we do that? What makes us worthy to stand before the king? Well, first off, a friend will stand before the king. And we are made a friend of Jesus by what he did for us. A family member stands before the king, and we are made in the family of God. I think of uh, John F. Kennedy, and his whole family practically was in his administration. But uh, pretty much his uh, little son, John Jr., was seen in pictures crawling under the resolute desk in the White House when he's meeting with foreign people. And that's what we get to do with God. We get to stand before him. Um, But also an exonerated person will stand before the accuser or before the magistrate or before a president or before a king. And not just a person who's said, okay, you're free, exonerated. The sins are wiped away. We get to stand before the Lord and before our king. Uh, Because of what Jesus did, we can confidently stand. But to stand before him we need to have Christ as our Savior, obviously. And I bet most people in this room, if not all of us, have done that. Um, but we will be like him one day. We're going to be changed to be like Jesus. First John 3, 2, paraphrasing, says that when he appears, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. We will stand before him and be like him, not righteous as him, or with the blood with the righteousness of Christ, of course, but we are not him. But we'll be like him him, similar to him, will be changed to be like him. Romans 12, 2 tells us to keep on becoming that way. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. We want to be changed. Several years ago, I was working at an airport, and a guy came in who I didn't know, uh, but everybody knew him, and he was a young Marine, a lean, mean, sharp Marine, this guy was. And I didn't know, but before going in the Marine Corps, he was not lean, he was not mean, and of course not a Marine, he was the exact opposite. He was as wide as he was tall, I found out. And he went before my boss, Bob, and as a Marine should do, look the person in the eye, this Marine was not looking at Bob for some reason. And he kept looking down at his feet. And Bob with a profanity-laced yell, says, why are you looking at your feet? (laughs) And this young Marine says, because I couldn't see him before. But he was changed so much that he could literally look down. Hey, there's feet down there. That's how big this guy was. And in a spiritual sense, that's how we are until we are changed to be like Jesus. We are like this fat kid who can't see his own feet, but we'll be changed to be like Jesus. Many years ago, there was a Christian song out there called One Day. And the lyrics go like this, One day Jesus will call my name. As the days go by, I hope I don't stay the same. I want to get so close to him that it's no big change, 
on that day when Jesus calls my name. So think of a high school football player going into the Marine Corps, gets out, the only change is his hair shorter and his uniform changed. But this kid was changed so much because he was so unlike a Marine. I want to be spiritually like that football player. So when I see Jesus, that change is no big deal. Thank you.